Hello guys, welcome to another video on the series of coding. Today we are going to do a very simple problem which is called missing number. Simple but interesting. Let's see the problem. You are given an array nums containing n distinct numbers in the range 0 to n. You have to return the only number in the range that is missing from the array. Let's try to take an example to understand. Suppose this is the array that is given to us, right? What is the size of this? There are four elements. So the size is four. So what do we expect? In this we expect 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Out of these numbers, which is missing, we want to find one. Okay, this is the actual array that is given to us, right? We wanted all these elements to be present, but 0 to n has the size of n plus 1. So here n is 4, right? So there are 5 elements that should have been present, but the size is only 4. So only 4 elements will be present. One of them is bound to be absent. So you have to find the element that is absent. Now in this you can see that 0 is present, 1 is present, 2 is present, 4 is present, 3 is missing. 3 is the number that is missing. So the first approach or the simplest approach to do this uh, problem will be just take a sum of all the elements that are expected to be present. So sum of elements that are expected to be present and then subtract it from the actual array. So you will get the missing element, right? So if you take the sum of all these elements, subtract uh, and subtract the actual elements that are present, three will be the lone element that is remaining and that will be your answer. So you can do that. Let us try to uh, code using the brute force approach first and let us see. So we will have to take the sum of the uh, expected values. So what is the sum of expected values? It will just be n into n plus 1 by 2. We can use a simple formula, right? So let me just write into 0.5. So this will be the sum of expected values and what is the sum of the current array? So we can just uh, use the accumulate inbuilt function which will give the sum of the current array. So we can start from the beginning and we can take the sum till the end. Nums dot begin. It should be dot here. Till nums dot end and we are the initial sum is 0. So you can just return this as your answer. This is the simple uh, brute force approach. Let us do one thing. Let us run the code and see if it is working. Okay, yeah, it's not working because we have not declared n. So let us quickly declare n. n will be your nums dot size. Okay, so now let us run the code and see if it is working. So it's fine and let us also submit this code and then let's move forward to the next approach. Okay, this is accepted. This is fine, uh, but this, uh, there's a better approach than this, which will be actually faster also uh, uh, because we are going to use bits for that and uh, it will also be faster because in this you will have to sum over a lot of values. So you may actually, uh, in this you will actually, uh, you can actually run into overflow errors because you are summing large values. In this case our answer got uh, accepted but uh, there could have been situations where int would not have been appropriate because you are overall summing this and subtracting this. So that is a problem. So you can rather do one thing rather than summing up these values, uh, expected value and subtracting from the actual values. You can do one thing. Why don't we take a ZOR of these uh, values? So what do I mean by that? Let's try to take a ZOR. So the element that we have is 0. If we take a ZOR of 0 with 0, we will get 0, right? So what is ZOR? So ZOR is if you take same any two elements that are same, if you take the ZOR of two elements that are same, you will get 0. If you take ZOR of two elements that are different, you will get 1. So what do I mean by that? For example, if you take ZOR of 0 with 1, in that case, you will get 1. If you take ZOR of 0 with 0, you will get 0. You take ZOR of 1 with uh, 1, you will get 0. So it's, it's like that. If you take ZOR of two numbers that are different, you will get 1. Okay. Otherwise, you will get 0. So, in this case, 0 and 0 are same. So, if you take the ZOR, you will get 0. Similarly, take ZOR of 1 with 1, it will give you 0. It will, it will cancel out. If you take ZOR of 2 with 2, it will give you 0. If you take ZOR of 4 with 4, it will give you 0. The element that will be left will be 3, right? So, that will be your answer. So, you can use this approach also to actually get the answer and you will not run into any sort of overflow errors. So, we can do that. So let us take this particular approach i is equal to 0 i less than nums dot size i plus plus and we have to basically take ZOR. So the symbol for ZOR will be this and let us start taking ZOR. So initially I'll declare answer initially let me make it 0 and I will take ZOR. So I have to take ZOR of 
each element so this is the zor that i am taking initially of all these values and then i have to take the zor of all these values also so that they cancel with this values so what can i do i can do one thing i can take the zor with i here itself okay so uh, this will uh, give me the proper answer but i will also have to take the zor finally with uh, with with n so let's say uh, n is equal to nums dot size i also have to take the zor with n because for example in this case we also have to take the zor with 4 right so uh, you have to take the zor with the last number also which is a uh, 4 so that and then you can finally return your answer so let's try this code out if it is working So it's fine. Let's just submit this and see if it's an accepted solution. So it's fine. Thank you for being patient and listening.